All right, so problem nine, we have a company that makes fleece clothing that uses fleece produced from two farms, Northern Farm and Western Farm. Let the random variable X represent the weight of fleece produced by a sheep from Northern Farm. The distribution of X has mean 14.1 pounds and standard deviation 1.3 pounds. Let the random variable Y represent the weight of fleece produced by a sheep from Western Farm. The distribution of y has mean 6.7 pounds and standard deviation 0.5 pound. Assume x and y are independent. Let w equal a total weight of fleece from 10 randomly selected sheep from northern farm and 15 randomly selected sheep from western farm. Which of the following is the standard deviation in pounds of w? Okay, so here we have a case of random variables that we're going to be adding. And so we need to know the properties of random variables when we add, subtract, and calculate standard deviations and variance. So um, let me I'll I'll go use my pencil. So x will be the 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 weight from fleece produced by sheep from Northern Farm, and x has a mean of fourteen point one and a standard deviation of one point three pounds. Y, the random variable Y represents the weight of fleece produced by sheep from Western Farm. And Y has a mean of 6.7 pounds and a standard deviation of 0.5 pounds. Oops, standard deviation of 0.5. So W is the total weight of fleece from 10 randomly selected sheep from Northern Farm and 15 randomly selected sheep from Western Farm. So W will then be essentially. 15 X, no, I'm sorry, 15, no, 10 X, because 10 coming from Northern Farm, which is X. But think of this as like, you know, X1, X2 plus X3, all the way to X10. And to that, we're going to, this is with this pins. To that, we're going to add, you know, 10 random or 15 randomly selected y values. So, like y1 plus all the way to y15. So, we can write again w as 10x plus 15y. I'm just going to write the y, like, I don't like writing the y like that. I just I like this. So I'm gonna make these y's like that. No big deal, but that's what's going on here. Okay, so w equals 10x plus 15y. Now we're trying to find the standard deviation of w. So the standard deviation of w is equal to the square root of the variance of w. The reason we need to find the variance of w is because you can't simply add standard deviations, but you can add variances. So to find the variance of W, whoops, let me put a square root. You simply then take 10 times the variance of X plus 15 times the variance of Y and square root it. So we're gonna have 10 times the variance of X plus 15 times the variance of Y, all square rooted. And then we just find this calculation. So this will be using a calculator. We're going to have 10 times 1.3 squared plus 15 times 0.5 squared. No, I was actually going to solve it. You don't even need to solve it. You just have to find the expression. Okay, so then the answer will be C. There you go. Okay, now 10. According to a report for veterinarians in the U.S., 36.5% of households in the U.S. own dogs and 30.4% 30 30 of households in the U.S. own cats. 
If one household in the U.S. is selected at random, what's the probability that the selected household will own a dog or a cat? Okay, so the probability, let's say, probability of D selecting a dog is 0 0.304, and the probability of C is no. This I wrote this wrong already. 0.365. And this is why I don't like using 10. So here we go. And the probability of selecting the cat or owning the cat is 0 0.304. Now we want to find the probability of D or C, so D union C. Now, the thing is we can't calculate this with just this information because we don't have any information about the percent of people who own a dog and a cat. And, and um, without that, you know, we don't know what this could be because it's possible to own a dog and a cat. Um, and so then, we have, so then we can't actually have enough information for this. Now, if you want to like a Venn diagram, remember like, it doesn't say that you can't own a dog and a cat. So we have like, you know, the sample space of dogs in here. And then you have the sample space of cats or the subspace of cats. But you can also own, you know, again, dog and a cat. That would be dog intersecting with cat. But a dog, but a dog or a cat would be this would be this region plus this region plus this region. We don't know all that, so we don't have enough info. On the sheets. Eleven. Okay, we got a sociologist that collected data from a sample of people on their highest level of education and number of times they visit any fast food restaurant during, during the previous week. The data are summarized in the box plots. So high school, community college, four-year college, monetary college. Based on the box plots, which of the following statements must be true? Okay, the number of people surveyed at the more than four-year college level is greater than the number of people surveyed at the high school level. Um, so we're talking about this versus that. We don't know how many people were surveyed in either one of these. Don't get tricked by how long the box plot is or the range of the box plot. It has nothing to do with how many individuals are there. This could very well, this could very well have maybe 100 people and this could have 10,000. So it's, it's not gonna be A. B, the proportion of people surveyed from the first quartile to the third quartile at the four-year college is less than the prospective proportion at the community college level. So at the four-year college, First quartile is this, that would be Q1. Let's see if that's Q1, and that would be Q3. And then it says less than the respective proportion at the community college level. The community college level, we're talking about the distance from here to here. This would be Q1, and that would be Q3. It's essentially saying that the distance from here to here, this length is less than this length, which is not. This length is, or sorry, this length is less than this length. So then it's it's saying that um proportion of people surveyed. Oh sorry, I'm I read that I, I was thinking this is proportion. If it said length or the or the interquartile range, that would be correct. But this is proportion. The proportion of people from Q1 to Q3 is 50%, no matter what the length is from Q1 to Q3. This is 50% of the people, that's 50% of the people. And this is kind of maybe, these ones may look a little weird, like what's going on here. It just so happens that Q1 and Q3 also coincide with the minimum and maximum values. So it's not gonna be B. C, the interquartile range for a number of visits at the more than four year college level is less than IQR for number of visits at the community college level. So the IQR is the distance from Q1 to Q3, which is gonna be this length, that'll be the IQR. Or, or it's saying that this is gonna be less than IQR for community college. So the distance from here to here. And that in, is indeed correct because this length is less than this length. So the answer is C.
12. For a recent season in college football, the total number of rushing yards for that season is recorded for each running back. The mean number of rushing yards for the running backs that season is 790. So let's put X bar 790. One running back had a 1,637 rushing yards for the season. That's, that's pretty good. And which is 2.4 standard deviation above the mean number of rushing yards. What's the standard deviation of the number of rushing yards for the running backs that season? Okay, this is a cool one. I like this. Um, okay, so let's see. It doesn't say anything about this, about the strength of this distribution. But we're told, let's see what we got here. Main number of rushing yards is 790, one rushing back had 1,637. So let's, let's, let's just call that X1. That's a randomly selected individual, 1,637. And we're told that this is 2.4 standard deviation, but the mean number of, young, of, of mean number of rushing yards. So then, so this is, so the mean would be here. Let's say that's 790. If 1637 is two standard deviations above the mean number of rushing yards, that means that X1, we'll say X1 is equal to X bar plus two times the standard deviation of X. Two times standard deviation of X. So X1 is 1637. The mean is 790, so plus 2 times the standard deviation of x. And so let's see what that would be. Oh, I'm, I'm goofing off. I'm, I don't think I got enough sleep. This is 2.42. I'm, so if you were confused, that's, you should, you should have been. I mean, if you're about to post an angry comment, that's fair. I should be putting 2.42 times the standard deviation of X. That's 2.42 times the standard deviation of X. Whoops. Okay, so now I can just solve this simple linear equation. So 1637 minus 790 divided by 2.42. So I just do that, and I get 350 for standard deviation of x. And so the answer is 12. I mean, the answer is C for 12. 